Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me, your host, Tommy Gilbert, as we sit down and take a behind-the-scenes look into Titan Athletics with weekly interviews with coaches and athletes. This is Titan Takeoffs. Off. Welcome back, Titan fans, alumni, family members. Excited to have you with us for week 10 of Titan Table Talk. Our first student athlete repeat guest of the year will be our first guest of the afternoon. That will be Titan senior midfielder Brody Seaton. Brody, I, I, I hate to I hate to dive too much right away into like you know overblowing what happened in the last week, but possibly the most significant and most exciting week in the history of the men's soccer program. Would you say? Yeah, something like that. I mean. <laughs> Like you saw, we've never won the conference before, and we pulled that off Saturday. And then not to mention the two games leading up to Saturday were just as crazy as Saturday. So, yeah, I mean, I could say it's something along those lines of one of the biggest weeks of Iowa men's soccer history. So it was something I'm very grateful to be a part of, for sure. It was a good time. Yeah, and I'm guessing many of you who are watching or listening to this have been keeping up pretty closely with what the the men's soccer program has accomplished in the last week and a half. If you did miss it, um, you know Titans got into the the CCW tournament as the sixth seed, uh, played the quarterfinal up at North Park. You had defeated earlier this year. Um, that was a, a two-two ball game at the end of the second overtime ended up winning 7-6 on PKs there uh, Vikings had scored in the 14th minute led for virtually the entire game until an 86th minute header from CJ Rodriguez tied it up you then had a free kick that you scored on in the first overtime before North Park tied it again themselves in the 109th minute then you head into the fifth round of PKs at that point Vikings are up 4-3 one successful PK away from Ending the Titans season, Sam Kedzior makes a save to keep it alive. Lo and behold, next three Titans hit their hit their PKs. Kedzior makes another save in the eighth round, and Ryan Miller finds the back of the net, and you're moving on. Take us through that game first. If you can think back through the uh, through the 90 plus minutes of craziness that have happened twice since then, yeah. tell us about that North Park game a little bit. Yeah. So North Park game, we like you said, we got the sixth seed. So on Wednesday night, we were wondering if we were going to go to Elmhurst or North Park. We get North Park. We knew we could beat them, so that was kind of a plus going into that game. And that game was weird because we started the first 15 minutes so strong. Like, we had some good chances. We could have scored in the first five minutes. And literally their first attack in our half, they scored a goal. And so that was just kind of tough for us. Like, we had been playing so good. Like, we were right there with them, and they scored on their first attack, and we're like, all right. So we go into halftime that game. We're like, guys, just keep doing what we're doing. Like, we are fine. Goal's coming. You know, no one freak out. Nothing like that. Second half's going by, you know – it was a little more even the second half. Honestly, they brought some good pressure. And so then we get a red card with about 17 minutes left. So we're down a goal. Now we're down a man playing with 10 guys. And so going into the last 10 minutes, we're kind of just throwing numbers forward. Like, you know, we got to get a goal here. Will McNulty on the long throw whips it into Sasha, who flicks it on to CJ, and we get one with three left. And we could all just see, like, when we scored that down a guy, their whole team was rattled. And so we definitely had the momentum going into overtime. Like you said, we scored in the first overtime. And the second overtime, we were really just, like, trying to hang on. Like like I said, we were down a guy. We went up a goal. We were really just trying to hang on, get to that end result. And <laughs> we couldn't hang on. They scored with about a minute and a half left. And then, like you said, we go to penalties. Penalties seemed to favor us that game. Uh, just making it there was not even bad for us. Like you said, Sam, back against the wall. He's got to make a save in the fifth round, and he comes up huge. And then next three guys just convert it for us, and we're on to the next round. So crazy game there for sure. Yeah, it definitely was. That's I don't know. You were saying earlier right before we went on air that, you know, despite – Winning the title on uh, Saturday night and the upset, of course, over second seeded Wheaton up at their place on Wednesday. You're saying the North Park game might have been the craziest of all. It was up there for sure. I mean, all three of them were crazy, but just for us, we've all been talking. Being down a guy with 17 left and being down a goal, like I remember being in the midfield that game. It was only me and Shu, and we were just getting like so tired, but we were like, this, this is our season. Like, this isn't the time to be, you know, backing down or anything. And we found a way, and that's really been our team is just finding a way, especially in that North Park game. 
Yeah, no kidding. So then you fast forward a few days from Saturday on to Wednesday, November 1st, heading up to Wheaton, a little bit of a different situation there in that you, you had a team that was poised to, to win the conference title outright until the upset loss down at Milliken um, just you know a few days before uh, a team that you had not beaten in the regular season like you had North Park. What was the confidence level like going into that game, obviously coming off a big win? We were feeling really good going into that game. Like, we were buzzing. Like you said, we just got a big result against North Park. We were kind of ready to go on the road. We felt like we should have beat Wheaton last time. That was a result that we felt didn't go our way. So we were all very excited. Um, I didn't get to play in that game. I was on a yellow card suspension, so I was like an assistant coach screaming at everyone, trying to get everyone hyped. But we came into that game so ready to go. We scored two goals in the first five minutes. Like, we were kind of on them. But – after those first two goals, we kind of, I don't want to say took our foot off the pedal or anything like that, but we just kind of, I don't know, we just had a bit of a period in the game where we weren't playing our best, you know, not doing the things we needed to do. And you saw they clawed back 2-2, and then there's about, I think, 20 minutes left. We're battling whatnot. They get a third goal on a tough call that, you know, a couple people got yellow cards arguing with the ref for, but... Ten minutes left, Sasha comes up huge, gets a goal, and then once again we go into penalties, and Sam Sam had his back against the wall twice that game. Yep. The fifth round needed a save, and then one in, I think, sudden death, there was one we needed to make a save too, and that was the game winner. So once again, another crazy semifinal where we just kind of found a way to win and got ourselves to the final. Yeah, and at that point, um, that was also Carthage. Carthage pulled the upset as well mm-hmm. on the road in the other semifinal. So then you have the six seed and the four seed battling it out up in Kenosha. Not the warmest night on Saturday night up there, that's no. for sure. Um, but uh, both teams obviously flying pretty high coming into that ball game. That one a, a very different opener, yeah. <laughs> opening few minutes, especially as compared to the Wheaton game. Carthage scored in the 18th and 59th minutes, so you go from the Wheaton game where you're trying to pull the upset on the road, but largely playing ahead for the first, you know, 50 minutes of the game or so. Mm-hmm. Firebirds go up 2-0, you're sitting there 60, 60th minute. Uh, where, where are our thoughts at at that point in terms of, okay, we're on fire, but you're staring the end of a season in the face with yeah. 30 minutes to go down too. Yeah, so the first half really just, we just were not playing that well, honestly. Like, we were defending decently. They got their one goal off a corner. That was just kind of a miscommunication from a couple guys. He puts the ball in the net, like, you know, oh, well. We go into halftime of that game. We were honestly, we weren't really that mad with where we were. Like, considering how we played, being down 1-0 was not a bad, you know, halftime score. And so we were kind of just like, we got to bring it, like, bring it better in the second half. Like, we were kind of letting them do what they wanted. We needed to enforce ourselves on the game a little more. And so in that second half, we didn't start the greatest. And then, like you said, they scored a second goal. We're down 2-0. And I really feel like Saturday was an absolute team win. Like, we had people coming off the bench playing some of the best they've ever played. Like, you know, Lucas Tran comes in off the bench, draws a PK. Ryan Miller steps up, probably the biggest PK of his life, buries that. Moosh comes off the bench as well, hits an absolute amazing goal. That one – so once once we got the PK, there was a lot of a lot of people on the bench that were like, oh, this is it. Like, they they were so, like, rattled after we got that pen. They'd been winning all game, and now we're on the front, for, front foot going into the last 20, which is when we excel. And so – we get that pen, Moosh scores to make it 2-2, and everyone's just going crazy, like, oh, pressure's on them. We got the momentum. Like, we're going, we're going. So we started getting some other guys back in. We had a bit of an interesting lineup at the end of the game, and we all knew like it was favoring us at the end of the game. Like I said, we had the momentum. We were going, pushing, and we got a couple chances, a couple corners, and then the last three minutes, you know, Lucas – has a shot, and it falls to me right in the box, and luckily enough, it goes in the back of the net, and that was it. That was the game. I mean, what what a way to win the CCIW <laughs> final, though. Couldn't really ask for a better ending. No kidding, and that, that went a little bit different for you guys in that you didn't have to go into eight rounds of PKs to put <laughs> that one away. <laughs> yeah, we, we had been talking earlier in the week. We were like, guys, you know, we can win in 90 minutes. We don't have to go to PKs, and Coach was giving us some – jokes as well that he's losing years off his life going into penalty rounds so we we got the job done in 90 minutes which was nice as well because it was a 
cold night, so we weren't ready to go stand in penalty kick lines. Yeah, you could well. you could tell even from the live stream. Like it it, it looked cold. I and mean, as we're sitting here recording this, it's sixty four degrees in Bloomington yeah, on exactly. Tuesday afternoon. But yeah, it was a it was a chilly um, really, you know, felt like felt like playoff soccer. Oh, yeah. And, exactly. Absolutely. That's, the what, end. that's what Coach says. He says we're playing in championship weather right now. Right. It gets cold, you're playing for something. So, Exactly. Um, give us a, a little bit of insight into just the, the atmosphere after the game, trophy presentation, bus coming home. I mean, coming off the week you guys had, you know, seven, seven days and, and two hours before that, Sitting there as a six seed, hoping you can go on the road and beat North Park. Maybe hoping is the wrong word. I know you guys had a lot yeah. of confidence you could do it, but a, a lot goes through that eight days, and all of a sudden go from you know down two zero facing the the end of seasons, end of careers, thirty minutes before, to standing there holding the CCW trophy, or in Will McNulty's case, sleeping <laughs> under the uh, the yeah. blanket of the banner with the trophy as a pillow. But uh, what was it? What was that like? I mean, it was just crazy, like you said, coming back from the deficit right at the end, and then it was awesome with the fan bus there, like, some of our best homies outside the team, and, like, you know, people's girlfriends were there, and everyone's family was there, you know, a lot of people hugging their moms and whatnot, like, it was just a crazy experience, because, like, we scored the goal right at the end, and then McNulty hit the final clearance right in front of all our fans, and, you know, they're running on the field congratulating us, and just... Just how happy everyone was, like, there was a lot of people shedding some tears, you know, it was a very emotional thing, just because no one's ever done it before for the soccer team, like, we were the first ones to ever do it, and like you said, that whole week was just leading up to it, we we had the confidence to do it, we all knew we belonged, and our biggest saying after the semifinal was, why not us, like, I mean, why not us, we made it this far, like, let's just go and do it, we had one more game to bring the title home, and we did it, and like you said, after the game, like, it was just all smiles, you know, holding the banner, holding the trophy, everyone taking pictures with their friends, with the team, and like I said, we really just did it together, like, that was the biggest thing, like, we all knew we could do it, and then pulling it off with those guys, it was, there's nothing better, because it was a 100% team effort, if one person wasn't in it, I don't think we would have done it, it was all of us together, and that's what our warm-up shirts say on the back together, and I really think that's why we brought it home. So it was just really a special feeling. And like you said, the bus ride home, that was just that was just so much fun with the guys. Uh-huh. Like everyone just had the speaker going, singing, you know, dancing, just enjoying the moment. So nothing better, nothing better could ask could ask for. So yeah, that's uh, it's pretty hard to top those moments in general. Sure. And one of those other things then that you have to do together is turn the page a little bit now because okay we celebrated we had this incredible run now we had another chance to do something that we've never done before as a program and go play in the NCAA tournament Mm -hmm. Saturday 11 a.m. up at 21st ranked University of Chicago in the first round Uh, that'll precede the other first round game between Rose Holman and Ohio Wesleyan so you know I mean talking about recovery coming off two double overtime and then uh, obviously a Still a pretty strenuous game uh, on Saturday night. Yeah. Um, recovery and then getting back into some training this week. What, what have your last couple of days looked like? Yeah, so yesterday that was actually a, one of the topics of conversation our coach was giving us that, like, we celebrated, we got the title, but now we got to kind of, like you said, flip the page and not be satisfied with what we did and try to do even more in the NCAA tournament. So yesterday was still kind of a recovery day. You know, we played a little bit, but still kind of shaking things off from the weekend. And then today will definitely be a probably a hard practice day. We'll play a little bit. And then the next couple of days we'll probably talk about some film from Chicago, you know, get more of a game plan. And then we're actually traveling Friday, so we'll have our last practice on New Chicago's field before we play Saturday. But we're just, we're just really excited to make a name for ourselves. I mean – there's not much better way to start the NCAA tournament than playing the reigning national champs. So, I mean, we got a tall task ahead, but we're ready for it and we're excited. So, Yeah, absolutely. And just it goes back to a little bit of that why not us mentality, exactly. which I, I think sometimes can be overplayed a little bit in sports. But th- mm-hmm. this is the exact situation where you're saying that it's, it's all house money at this point. Mm-hmm. Pick seventh in the preseason poll, exactly. going in after you know, what was a what had many a regular season that had many very strong moments, yeah. um, but going in as a sixth seed in the conference tournament and pulling this off, 
uh, those are teams that can be dangerous. Mm-hmm. You see it in, in every sport all the time. Exactly. Um, this will be the fourth matchup for the Maroons against the CCAW team this year. They beat North Park 1-0, they beat Wheaton 4-1, to and they tied Carthage 1-1. Mm-hmm. Um, so a, a lot of uh, – have, have you taken a look at film from any of those games in terms of how teams that you know well have attacked the Maroons, or are you kind of just looking at what they do in general? Uh, we looked at the results, but we haven't watched any film. We just got the Carthage U Chicago film on our huddle recently, so we'll definitely be watching that. But but haven't actually watched any yet. But like you said, just kind of seeing those results gives us a lot of confidence. Like, they just tied Carthage. They beat North Park 1-0. We beat them twice this year. So, I mean, it's just going to be a game. It's just going to be an NCAA tournament game. Like, you always see it in March Madness, and it's kind of the same thing. Like, you know, like you said, why not us? Like, we're just going to go up there, do what we can, and hopefully get a big result. Because if we can get a result against them, I feel like we can get a result against anybody. So that'll definitely boost the confidence for the team. So... Absolutely. Well, good luck to you. Good luck to all the guys this weekend. Once again, that is 11 a.m. on Saturday up at University of Chicago. Uh, IWSports.com will have all the links, previews, live stream links, everything you need to watch that game and watch the Titans make their NCAA tournament debut. To all the guys, go get them on Saturday. And thanks for joining us, Brody. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'll be back momentarily with women's basketball assistant coach Brian Ayersman. That's driven. Back is more. And she's able to snag it and stop the home run. And time expires. Your 2000 CCIW men's across tournament champions are the Titans of Illinois Wesleyan University. Welcome back to Titan Table Talk, and for the second time in the last few weeks, I'm joined by a member of the Titan women's basketball coaching staff. This time, it is assistant coach Brian Ayersman. Brian, how are we doing today? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Recovered from pickleball this morning, so (laughs) good to go. Good to know. Excellent. Uh, Glad you didn't hit anything too hard at me, and I made it here. Excellent. Um, looking back now, we, when we had coach Smith in here, we talked a little bit about, you know, season preview type stuff. We talked about, uh, the, the lead into the ISU Illinois Wesleyan game just what, now nine days ago, we yeah. we'll be airing this on Thursday. So a few more after that, but, uh, tell us going back to the very beginning a little bit, how this, uh, the idea for bringing this game back came about. Yeah, I think, I mean, I had worked there three years ago. This is my third year at Wesleyan. So I worked there for four years, and it's um, Kristen and Scott, the head coach and the associate head coach, are still there. Um, And I know their staff really well. So I think it was about a year or two ago, I was visiting a practice or something of theirs, and um, we were talking about exhibition games, and um, we kind of joked about, you know, like, what if we played each other? And then I think, like, five minutes had kind of passed, and Kristen was like, we'll play you guys. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, let's get it going. So I think um, kind of a little bit of a joke turned into like, well, a little bit of reflection of like, why don't we? And so then it it obviously took off and the men had decided to play too. And um, we actually had a different date. The women's game was a different date. We had the contract, everything. And then when the men decided to play um, doubleheader, it was kind of a no brainer. I thought that was a great idea um, by the powers above, above my pay grade. But uh, just a great event for the community. I mean, I think there were 6,500 people there, brought the town together, and it never felt like, I mean, obviously when you're in a game, you want to, you're competing against another team, um, but I, I felt a lot of respect for them. I mean, I knew them at ISU really well, so that was part of it, but I think just both teams, and I actually had lunch with um, Scott today, and he was talking about how Deanna Wilson, the, one of their best players, commented like, you know, they were really nice and respectful, but they played hard. Like, they wanted, they weren't scared. And so I think that was a big compliment, too, just to hear from them that um, we were undersized, un, um, overmatched, but I, um, we competed well. Um, so, again, really fun day. Obviously, when you lose a game by 38 points, you're not going to reflect on the actual game itself and be like it was perfect. Um, but there was still a lot of really good stuff. Um, first quarter we played we played with them for about a quarter and a half I think it was the seven point game at the media timeout in the second quarter um and I thought a lot our players weren't scared especially off the bat um 
they went in aggressively for the most part and rebounded as hard as they could. Uh, so a lot of pride, and that's a really good Division One team. Yeah. That's not just any yep. Division One team. I mean, they won their first game against a Division One opponent by 50 points last night. So um, it's not like we were just going to play a bigger school. This is a really successful school. And I think that's part of the respect. Both programs have very storied histories, and um, they're just in good places right now. Yeah, certainly. Um, and just, you know, being there from the from the tip of the women's game to the end of the men's game, just watching the place fill up throughout the first half. I mean, it, you know, 6,500 was a total attendance, but there was a, a good chunk of that group that was there for the women's yeah. game and for almost the entirety of the women's game. And just having that atmosphere as a way to open your season, like, mm-hmm. yes, it doesn't count, but you know, it's in standings or anything like that, but it very much counts for experience. 100%. And and being able to walk into a place that's it's going to be the biggest arena that you mm-hmm. play in all year, you know, capacity wise, attendance wise, right. and also for many of those players, uh, sometimes the most people that they know yeah. in one place attending that game, mm-hmm. and just having that be your season opener, yeah. um, it, it you know really sets the tone for okay, this is the a level of uh, obviously physically we can't play that level mm-hmm. of basketball, yeah. but. You know, we're going to see teams yep. down the line trying to play yep. you know, a competitive Division three schedule that right. are going to bring significant challenges. Right. Um, some teams that might be quicker than us, some teams that might be bigger than us. Not necessarily anybody who's who's walking out there with someone who's you know six four above. Yeah. But uh, it, it's a great you know challenge to open the season. And uh, were there any any takeaways that you saw that were kind of eye openers for you in terms of players that stepped up throughout that game? Um, I think it was nice to see, you know, Ava Bardick is a transfer that we talked about who um, was at University of Illinois Springfield. Um, So you've seen, I've seen highlights of her, but I didn't get to go to any of her games. So, and I'd seen her in practice, but I hadn't seen her play in a a real game and just see how it would mesh. And I was, I wasn't surprised, but it was just a really pleasant uh, experience to watch how I think she's going to really help our team this year. Um, Lauren Huber went against one of the best defenders I've worked with ever in women's um, basketball in the last seven years in Kate Bullman, and she got shots on it. I mean, she scored 14 points, and I know that Kate was not happy with her um, able to do that, and she was just like, how is she doing this? So I think they really stepped up on a big stage, um, Ava and Lauren did, and Mallory Powers scoring in the lane. Um, Normally in the past she's been more of a three-point shooter, but I think her length and her size is something that we can take advantage of, and we've been honored to try to – to keep and I know she's worked on it, but it's one thing to work on it and then apply it in a game. And she did it against probably the biggest team that we're going to play. Um, so I was really proud of her for getting um, inside the lane. So a lot of really good stuff um, from our team. But those are some of the performances that stick out. Yeah, absolutely. So looking ahead to to games that won't be seen live by sixty five hundred people, but do count for something. Uh, Titans go on the road this weekend to open things up at the Cornell Classic in Mount Vernon, Iowa. Uh, Saturday, November 5th, 7 p.m. tip against the host Cornell, and then uh, Sunday, 1 p.m. against Luther. Mm -hmm. Obviously, well into preparations, watching Mm -hmm. film and everything like that for this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, But any insights you want to give us on on opening weekend? Yeah, I think, obviously, both teams' first game of the season, it's a little bit of a guessing game in terms of um, what they're going to do in personnel. But Cornell um, actually had a scrimmage um, that we – that was on their website, so we could kind of watch a little bit of that. Um, they are a 2-3. They press kind of with the two up front, which is a little bit of a different style than what we've maybe even prepared for or had to play against before. So I think a big focus for us is, you know, working on zone offense, but also um, making sure we don't settle just for the three-point shot. I know we didn't shoot it well against ISU. I believe we have good three-point shooters on our team, but um, – really getting it inside first and not just settling. Because in a zone sometimes, you know, you're going to have an open look, and that's the point of a zone um, from outside. So um, Cornell is – they have some young freshmen who I think are going to be good for them. It'll be a good challenge, especially on their home floor. Um, Luther, the next day, a short turnaround. They return, I believe it's seven of their top eight, um, eight of their top nine. So I had a pretty good idea just watching film of last year. Um, They have some strong players inside, which – you know, they're not as tall maybe as what the ISU players are, but, you know, they demand the same kind of amount of attention in terms of what they're trying to do. So um, it'll be two different challenges, but uh, I think a good way to open the season, especially on the road. Um, like you said, though, we're not going to play against as or in as front of many people as we just did, but I think that road environment, that 
away from Shirk Center environment is really going to help in our exhibition when we go um, this weekend. Mm-hmm. And, and when you look at, you know, talk about Luther returning a, a majority of their rotation, mm-hmm. obviously uh, you can say the same thing in, in large part here at Illinois Wesleyan, uh, replacing some minutes from, from Kelly Carlson and uh, Caitlin Heller at the point in particular. Mm-hmm. What, what is the plan to replace Caitlin's role, especially as kind of the facilitator and, and running the offense? Yeah, I think um, obviously Caitlin was a great player for us. She was second team all conference, um, was good in our run and jump, was probably our best at getting inside the lane. So we're really going to miss her from that position um, as a point guard. We, we kind of, I don't want to say by committee, but I think we have two of the best um, guards in, in the conference, uh, Sawyer White and Ava Bardick. Um, both can play the point, both can play off the ball. So it's funny because they're both having the same question like, okay, what am I, am I the point guard? Am I? I said, we can have both. Like you're going to learn to play together. You're going to learn to be really successful together. Um, who brings up the ball is not always the most important thing. So I think um, we have some really good options at point guard. Um, and I never, you know, it's hard to replace one player because everyone is so different. And Ava and Sawyer are both very different than Caitlin. So I think our team will be a little bit different in that regard. Um, But I do think I'm excited about our prospects at that position. And then Kelly Carlson, you mentioned, and a lot of things that she did were not as noticed. They weren't in the stat sheet. Um, She guarded the other team's best post player. Um, She rebounded, and she made putbacks. And that isn't always the most glamorous thing but she really bought into her role. And that's also any, any team you have, you need people to buy into their role. And that, you know, when they do that, their role becomes, you know, almost doubly important because the effects are, are felt then. Um, so going to miss Kelly with that. Um, I want to, I do want to mention uh, Martha Lippick. Yep. She didn't mm-hmm. get a lot of time last year um, in terms of varsity, but she's been really good in practice. Um, probably our best screener. Again, something you don't always get to, to see on paper. Um, good defender, good help defender. Yesterday in practice, I think she was 10 for 10 uh, from the field, but that's because she's taking good shots and and buying into the role that she has. So, um, again, not necessarily replacing Kelly Carlson in that way, but somebody who I think um, could fit that mold a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, looking forward to to seeing you guys go on the road, open the season for real when it counts this weekend. Once again, 7 p.m. tip on Saturday, November 5th against Cornell. That'll just be about two two days after this airs. Good luck to you guys, Brian. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be back momentarily with Titan head football coach Norm Esch. Why is Illinois Wesleyan the number one school in Illinois for jobs? Maybe it's because we're the AND University. That's right, A-N-D, and. Here you can explore the arts and study in a pre-professional program, double major, and play a sport. Do an internship and study abroad. Your opportunities are endless. Set yourself apart with a degree from Illinois Wesleyan. Welcome back inside the Ames Library on a beautiful fall afternoon. We are chatting with our third of four guests this week on Titan Table Talk. It is Illinois Wesleyan head football coach Norm Esch. Coach Esch, welcome back once again. Thanks for joining us today. It's good to be here. It's, uh, we're getting ready for the final game of the 2023 season. It's senior day, so looking forward to that game and uh, you know, sending our, se- our seniors off with a win. Yeah, and as you look back at you know four years, it's been a it's been a wild ride for this year's senior class coming in. Of course, during the the COVID year, seeing a couple of you know uh, up and down years in the program on the offensive and defensive side, and working to build something really great again for the future. As as you look back uh, across these four years, um, any message you want to send to to the seniors that you haven't maybe already delivered in the locker room? Well, I call them the COVID kids. I mean, they came in at a tough time. Uh, that the twenty season. 2020 season was canceled. Uh, we played a spring season. Uh, they came in and trying to adjust to college life as a freshman, and they were going through COVID. It was just a tough situation for them, and that's one of the reasons I think it's a smaller class. You know, some of those kids just uh, didn't stay with the program. But the ones that did stay with the program, they're a great group. Uh, they have contributed to Titan football. Um, they've done everything that we asked them to do. They, they're great Titans, and we're going to miss them. And... Uh, there's nothing other than we'd rather do is to send them off with a win. And uh, we get to play Elmhurst, you know, they're the same record as we are. So 
Uh, I think our players are really excited to finish up the year. And, you know, this is a key game because you sent out the seniors with a win, but you also kind of set the foundation for next year. And uh, we have 34, 34, actually we have more. We have close to 42 juniors on our football team. So it could be one of the largest senior classes ever in the history of the program for next year. Yeah, and looking back, as you said, Elmhurst coming in on Saturday for a 1 p.m. kickoff. Uh, Titans have won eight in a row against the Blue Jays last year, gotten an early hole, and were able to rally back for a pretty dramatic 21-17 victory up in the suburbs. Uh, as the Blue Jays come back this year, obviously led by a new coaching staff that couldn't possibly be more familiar with the Titan football program in the form of head coach Mike Murray. Um, what's it going to be like to, to welcome Coach Murray back to the sidelines as an opponent? It'll be different. You know, Mike was uh, the defensive coordinator here for many, many years and also was an offensive coordinator for a couple of years. And... Uh, was with me, left, came back, and then left again. And uh, he's done a good job. I mean, he's, he's been in a lot of great places, but, uh, you know, he's a Titan at heart. I mean, he played here for Coach Larson, and, and I know that he has some green in him someplace, even though he has blue on right now. But uh, it'll be fun, you know, um, to go against Mike. And, uh, and Drew uh, uh, Richardson was on our mm -hmm. staff last year. He's the defensive coordinator. So there's a couple familiar faces over there. Absolutely. It'd be good to, to welcome them back for sure. I uh, want to talk about a, a little bit about the offensive performance, especially in the second half last week against North Central. Obviously a tough test going up against, uh, you know, probably the, the most successful program in Division Three over the last few years. Um, an offense that can put a lot of points on the board in a hurry, but Titans put 26 on the North Central defense uh, last Saturday, the most that any team has scored up there in the past five years. What did you see in the second half? Well, that was exciting to hear. Um, and we left one out there, too. We were in the red zone, and, and Jay threw an interception in the end zone. So we feel like, you know, we could have put over 30 points on him. Uh, I thought our offense played very well. Um, we had some big plays, big catches by our receivers, and we ran the ball a little bit. So <clears throat> felt good about that. Um, you know, didn't feel good about the, the, the opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Our special teams have been really good all year, and, and we gave a touch up, touchdown to them right away. And, we responded, though. We came back and, and scored and uh, missed the extra point. And we can't do that. I mean, that's just any momentum you get on the, on the score, you kind of lose on the miss extra point. And they're all important. They really are. So then from then on, we had to go for two points. And, uh, you know, we've had some success with one of them, but the other one should have been a two point. It was controversial a little bit. I think we had it and they didn't really mid. But uh, uh Felt good about uh, our offensive performance. Defense a little disappointed. We just gave up too many big plays. But, you know, they are. that's the reason why they're number one in the country. They're a good football team. And, uh, you know, we got to build upon the positives that we had in the ballgame. Yeah, absolutely. Miles Key, four catches for 158 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Moore had uh, just over 100 yards and a touchdown as well. Um, so able to get the ball to some of those playmakers um, beyond the, the North Central backliner defense, and that was really good to see. Um, as, as you look back over this season, um, anything that you'd really like to see this weekend other than a win to close things out and end things on a really high note going into next year with that big class? Well, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a challenging year. Um, you know, we played some really good people early, and, you know, I have a saying that uh, – Every time you win, you gain confidence, and every time you lose, you lose confidence. And we just got off to just a rough st start, and then we had some injuries. You know, Jay Lemonager got hurt in the Wheaton game. So we went into Carroll with, you know, uh, Ryan Sachs, who hadn't played quarterback since last year. And just, you know, there were some challenges during the year. And, um, you know, if we would have got off in the right start against Central, you know, win that game, it could have been a whole different season. But... Uh, we, we believe in the kids we have in the program, and we got a big class coming back. So, you know, we're going to be a very veteran team next year, and that's, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll say goodbye to those 12 seniors representing the graduating class of 2024 on Saturday afternoon. Come on out to Tucci Stadium. Should be a beautiful early November day for Titan football. 1 p.m. kickoff, senior ceremony right before the game. We'll see you there. Good luck, Coach. Back with our final guest of the day, Ron Rose. 
Hey there, Titan fans. The Titan Streaming Network is looking for new sponsors for the 2023-2024 season. If you are interested in sponsoring the live streams and having your brand or company showcased during the games, don't hesitate to reach out to live stream coordinator Tyler Wilson at twilson2 at iwu.edu. Together, we can form a partnership that helps all sides and allows us to continue showcasing and supporting Titan athletics. Thank you, and go Titans! Welcome back once again. Our final guest this afternoon is Titan head men's basketball coach Ron Rose for the first time this season. Ron, welcome to Titan Tommy, Table it's Talk. great to be here, man. Should be a fun season. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. And the Titans will kick off the year uh, just, a, just over 48 hours from when we're filming this. Um, Sigma tournament this weekend. But first, I want to rewind a little bit to the two exhibition games. Obviously, yeah. the much hyped affair <laughs> over at SefQ Arena against ISU, and then a couple days later, heading up the road to face Northern Illinois. Obviously, treating those much different than regular season games. Trying to trying to play a pretty big rotation in both those games. But uh, anything you saw that really stood out to you? Well, I I do view those as practice games. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're two weeks of full practice in when you face. Illinois State first, and then three days later, you go up to Northern Illinois. You know, one of our goals is always to try to get a Division One exhibition. Our guys uh, love those experiences, love that challenge, um, and and we got better. You know, when you play those games, you, your weaknesses are really highlighted. It, it really exposes of what you need to get better at. And, um, you know, I think we were all disappointed in, in our, our competitive level in the first one. Um, and, you know, the first game, you never know exactly what you're going to get. And then when it's hyped, you know, in front of six, 7,000 people, I think it just kind of snowballed on us a little bit. But I will say this. I thought defensively we really competed well. The ball just didn't go in the basket, and, and that's the name of the game. So um, I, I also thought then, um, you know, then the, the, the wheels start grinding when the ball's not going in, and then you do some uncharacteristic things. Northern Illinois, just three days later, we executed much better, shot it much better. You know, you look at as a simple thing as free throw shooting. We shot 53% against Illinois State. We're up to 85% three days later. Well, that's not any anything that we're better free throw shooters. You're just a little more relaxed, feet are on the ground. And so, uh, and, and, you know, you play those games, you're playing – uh, big, strong, athletic guys. So you have to compete really hard. You got to play really hard. The, the pace of the game is fast, and I'm really hoping that because of those two experiences, it brings out the level of urgency and how hard you have to play. Do you think part of that advantage as well is is in that size differential? Because uh, we have a pretty big roster. You're not going to see a ton of teams in Division Three play that are going to significantly outclass us when it comes to size, either inside or outside. That is a little bit the case when you're facing the, the D1 no team doubt. sometimes. Yeah, and I, I absolutely think that we are a big Division three basketball team. I, I don't know if we'll face anyone taller than us all year. It, it's the the biggest team in my tenure here at Illinois Wesleyan. And the hard part is, you're right, you're playing two Division one teams that, quite honestly, if you, if you just looked at us, um, there wasn't – very comparable. Yep. We matched up size-wise in both games pretty well, but it was hard to get baskets at the rim. And so that is something that we're going to that, – that's going to be a strength of ours that really a strength was taken away mm-hmm. in those games. And I think offensively, you know, we didn't score it as well as we'd liked. Uh, but I think part of that is once we're able to uh, score baskets in the paint, it's going to open up everything for us. Yeah, Absolutely. And uh, things that are not so open this year. Um, if you look at the CCW preseason poll, I got a good chuckle out of that one. You might as well just take half the conference and write, I have no idea. Right there. Was, you know, North Park 55, Carthage 54, Elmhurst 53, Illinois Wesleyan 51. The top three teams all had three first place votes. Um, should be as, as wide open, as competitive uh, a conference as you've seen in a long time, even for the CCIW. Yeah, it's always good. Uh-huh. It's always good. That's unique when you have three teams getting three first first place votes and then we're we're just an eyelash behind them um you know in terms of getting in that the top three so um you know what happens usually is the teams that get picked 
in those top four spots have a lot of returning guys yep. back. There's there's some certainty in terms, at least that's how I think coaches usually vote, is vote what they know. Mm-hmm. And so the four of us have the most returning players, the most the fewest questions, I guess. And it's going to be a great league. It's, it's you know, the, the whole fifth-year COVID thing has changed the dynamic a little bit in terms of exactly knowing who everybody has. But uh, it's going to be a great conference league. They, they tell me it's really fun. I, I, <laughs> I, I usually invest in Tums during those three months, but should should be some really high-level basketball. The CC, that'll be fun for everybody but Ron. We can put that on the back of a T-shirt right there. Um, but speaking of, of really fun things and fun ways to open the season the last couple of years, this will be the third year of the Sigma Hall of Fame Invitational <laughs> this coming weekend, 5 p.m. Friday, UW Stout takes on 15th ranked Mary Harden Baylor up from Texas and then Illinois Wesleyan and Ohio Wesleyan at 7 p.m. As you go looking at uh, Ohio Wesleyan preparing for that game, the real season opener here, how do you plan to attack them? Well, first I'd say, you know, in a very short time, the Jack Sigma Hall of Fame invite has become one of the premier Division Three events in the country. And so I want to make a, a really quick a thank you to Greg and Cole Gardner. Greg was... Uh, Jack Sigma's accounting professor, and they uh, uh, maintained their friendship over the years and made a nice donation to run this event in Jack's name. And then I want to thank uh, Jack Sigma. I mean, it's pretty cool to have a Naismith Hall of Famer as an alum, and then his willingness to put his name on it and trust that we will run a first-class event. Um, and, you know, that first year, all four teams won their conference. All four teams advanced to the NCAA tournament. This is a uh, competitively very similar to a first-round weekend of the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a great field again. And Ohio Wesleyan coming in, um, you know, they, they've had teams year in, year out are very competitive. Mike DeWitt, their coach, runs a great program. Uh, he runs incredible offense, very hard to guard. Um, they spread the floor, a lot of different actions that are, you know, that's one of the things over the course of a year you get better at of guarding different actions, different offenses. And to be thrown in to have to guard uh, what they run game one is going to be a challenge. We hope defense is going to be one of our things that we can hang our hat on. I mean, we've got a team that, a uh, bunch of guys that, that appear to be um, committed to that end of the floor, but will be tested game one. Yeah, absolutely. And and like so many other programs we've talked about on some of the shows this fall, we go back to, you know, volleyball and soccer in the first couple of weeks. Um, you know, so much of that preparing yourself for a tough league and preparing yourself for conference play and to be the best you can be at the end of the season is to face some of these high level programs early on and hope you hope you're ready for the challenge. Really, well, it's really it, it, let's take that that uh, page out of the playbook for men's soccer and, and women's volleyball, because, yeah, they both have had great runs here these last few weeks. And and that is something, you know. Uh, I, I took from Coach Bridges. You know, he we always have played at Illinois Wesleyan as competitive non-conference schedule as possible because you know what's coming in conference play. And so if you want to be prepared for that, um, you, you better play a good non-conference schedule and get challenged, figure out where you got to get better, and play some close games so that you're prepared for those. Yeah, and should have a couple this weekend. Um, once again, the schedule for those who are coming out this weekend, Friday night, 5 p.m. the opener, and then the Titans play at 7. The losers of those two games on Friday night will play at 3 on Saturday. The winners will play at 5. Should be a very exciting weekend. Ron, I do have one final question for you, and if you need to consult any notes on your phone, you can. <laughs> Do you have your mom's cell phone number? I absolutely do. Okay, that's good to know. Brady Keel uh, was, you know, wondering after the, the situation. <laughs> <laughs> you always should have your mom. Yes, why I asked Brady, do you have your mom's number? Yeah, yeah, that, that we all should have our mom's cell phone number. And not only have them, we should call them every week, Tommy. <laughs> that's, hey, one thing I do want to mention to Jack Sigma on Saturday, we are, we've made a tradition of honoring different former Titans each weekend. The first year we honored the academic All-Americans. Last year we honored the All-Americans. This year we're honoring all six Final Four teams uh, from – the past. So we've got several players from those six teams coming back. Very excited to get them back on campus and recognize them. 
Yeah, should be a lot of fun. Come on out to the Shirk Center this weekend for a great time. Some Titan basketball. I should have known uh, you had something up your sleeve, Tommy. It was ready. I didn't. I I won't say who put me up to this. It was possibly Katie Gonzalez. You're possibly but yes. You never know. And, uh, it usually is. <laughs> and before we sign off, I think we do need to give a shout out to our executive producer sitting just to our left, Tyler Wilson, who got married this past weekend. Congratulations, All right, Tyler. Tyler, congratulations, man. You know, if you're wondering. About about the two-day delay on getting the show broadcast. Part of it was my schedule, but part of it was trying to give Tyler one whole day off after his wedding. <laughs> yeah, there so, you go. Congratulations, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Rose, for joining us, and we'll see you this weekend. Thanks for having me on.